Well, we have another graphic I'd like to show. That we were talking a little bit earlier about the possibility of going to the convention without one true candidate. Uh, the last time that that happened, uh, the Democrats had an open convention, was in 1952 when Adelaide Stevenson lost to Eisenhower. And the last time it happened to the Republicans was in 48 when Thomas Dewey lost to Harry Truman. Apparently, we don't have that graphic. But we, we talked a little bit about that. And, and if that actually happens, it may bring the momentum up a little bit in the elections. Do you think another thing that could, could make voter turnout stronger is this diversity we were talking about earlier, about having some more diverse, for lack of a better word, candidates? I think that with the African-American vote, yes. I think that African-American voters who often feel uh, that their votes are not really uh, meaningful or counted will turn out in great numbers to vote for Barack Obama. The women, that's a whole different issue because historically the Republican Party has had as many strong women behind the scenes as had the Democratic Party. And so I think you've got a lot of behind the scenes powerful Republican women who under no circumstances would vote right. for a Democratic woman. Mm -hmm. What do you think the likelihood of us ending up in, in that scenario of, of not having a true candidate chosen is? You should ask us that on February 6th. Yeah. That's the day we should answer that. But Probably. I guess I, I really feel that that's sort of unlikely. You know, I, I saw a bumper sticker the other day that said, Gore and then smaller letters, Obama in 2008. <laughs> and you know, the Gore faithful in Tennessee still are hoping that the convention is going to be so divided that they will call on uh, Vice President Gore to be the nominee and to be the standard bearer. But I really do think that it's going to be settled here within the next month or so. And I think unfortunately, it, it, if if the extremes do control both parties, I think you're going to see a lot of disillusioned voters, which really bodes the very best for a third party candidate. If you have both parties kind of settled and done and nobody likes the choices, this would be the time for somebody else to run as a third party candidate. One of the groups we haven't really talked about and being here on a college campus we can't ignore is the young vote. What do you think the dynamics of the election are going to do to the young vote. It's, it's a group that they traditionally have a tough time getting out there. You know, actually it's really interesting. Ironically, we talk about diversity and how that's so, been so important in this campaign that would get more people to turn out and vote. But the, one, the person that has really fired up college-age voters has been Ron Paul. Um, <laughs> a, a, an older white male who really should not be the, <laughs> the charismatic magnet that he has been. But every indication has been that college-age students absolutely love Ron Paul. Now, I, I don't think I'm going against conventional wisdom to say he is not going to get the nomination. Um, but, I mean, it does raise some interesting questions. Where do those voters then go? Um, and I would suggest the diverse field then would help pull them in. I mean, I would think, say Barack Obama's charisma will definitely be a good place for many college students. You know, Ron Paul, uh, uh, one day, his name started appearing on the volunteer state sidewalks. <laughs> I walked across campus and somebody had come out here over the weekend. And then you go over into Nashville around Vanderbilt and there were homemade signs nailed to uh, light poles all over the Vanderbilt neighborhood. And I thought, this is truly amazing that this man has generated the interest of all of these young people. I think Grady is absolutely right. He's, he's got some enthusiasm that I hope will carry in to voters come November. Do you think if he loses, they will lose that wave of excitement? Or do you think that's enough to get them interested, passionate about what's going on in their country? I hope that it's enough to get them passionate. Um, that's what I would love to see personally. I've already, I'm already hearing a lot of people saying that um, they think the Ron Paul, that Ron Paul not doing as well as he is in the polls is kind of a conspiracy. So it ah. may be uh, <laughs> that it's the media who has worked against Ron Paul from doing better. They're not reporting his numbers accurately. So they may, we may have the opposite effect. They may drop out of it entirely because they're so disillusioned that their guy did not show better. And you know, that I think that happened with the Howard Dean campaign. He had all of those young people who were so committed to him and so idealistic. And in the beginning, people were saying, this is another Bobby Kennedy. 
And then they got very disillusioned with Howard Dean's campaign before it was all over, and I think they pretty much dropped off of the, the political map. I think what's important to note about Ron Paul, though, particularly for our college-age voters, is that I think what, what caused them to gravitate toward him was not just his enthusiasm, but he seemed to be speaking truth in a way that the other candidates were not. Any of the major contenders seemed to be playing regular politics. I think Dennis Kucinich did this on the Democratic side as well. He spoke about things that others would not, you know, would not speak to. Right. And I think that says a lot about what that age group, that 18 to 25 year old is looking for. They're not interested in the regular political game. They right. want someone that they feel like is really going to tell them how it is. About 20 seconds apiece to tell me what you think your predictions are for this fall. You can give us as much or as little of your own personal beliefs. <laughs> Well, that sort of puts us both on the spot. I think that it's too close to call. I think that we thought 2000 was a close election. I think this one will be even closer. Really? I think that a Republican could, in fact, win uh, again if the Democrats are portrayed as extremely liberal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think by the same token, the war and the economy could be what brings the Republican Party down and takes them out of the White House. Anything to add to that? Uh, I'm going to differ a little bit. So I think that it, it'll be a, con a hotly contested election, but I think the Democrats are actually going to walk away with this one. And I say that because of the thing that we mentioned at the very beginning. I think illegal immigration, that issue, is splitting the Republicans on the inside. They just ha don't have a strong grip on it. And when we get to the general election, I think that's going to become a lot more evident. All right. I'd like to talk to you both again February 6th. We'll see. <laughs> well, mark your calendars. The Democrats will convene in Denver from August 25th to the 28th. The Republicans convene in Minneapolis, St. Paul, September 1st through the 4th. If you'd like more information about our guests today, you can log on to our website, website at volstate.edu forward slash inside politics. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time when we turn our attention back to state politics with our guest, State Representative Bob Bibb. For more information about the guest on this show, please visit our website at ballstate.edu slash insidepolitics.